As we gather this morning, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome as we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries during this uh, celebratory time of Easter. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Father Jeff Clengens. Um, this St. Agatha's was my parish for 32 years before I went to the seminary. Um, and I'm here in a very particular way today because my mum and dad, who some of you may know, are sitting right there in the front. Today is my mum's birthday, and next Saturday is their 61st wedding anniversary. So I'm here to celebrate a special Mass in a particular way to bless them. Yeah, thank you. We prepare as we always do to celebrate these sacred mysteries by acknowledging those times that we failed to live and love in the way God asks us to. So we ask his forgiveness now through our penitential rite. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's praise God now with the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God. Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our At the right hand of the Father, have 
mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Offering the Mass this morning for Elizabeth Clengens for her birthday, for Derek de Silva, whose rest, uh, deceased anniversary it is, and in thanksgiving for Marie Claire. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus. The same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate. After Pilate had decided to release him, it was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact, we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold. When God said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you release me. Have mercy and hear me. It is the Lord who grants favours to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace, and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of St John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. 
we can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in them. The word of the Lord. Lord Jesus, make your word plain to us. Make our hearts burn with love when you speak. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it. And they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant when I said while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms, has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Without ignoring the human aspect, recent theology has been broadening its attention to include the natural world from which we have emerged, in which we live, and for which we are responsible. This wider scope puts theology back in touch and in tune with major themes of biblical, patristic and medieval theology, so many aspects of which have not been considered for centuries. To date, The major share of theological attention has focused on the doctrine of creation and the superiority of human beings in a somewhat literalist sense. However, since God has evolutively created our world and judged it to be very good, the natural world should be viewed by us as more than a mere backdrop for the human drama of sin and redemption, as well as much more than an instrument to supply human needs. All of creation is God's beloved handiwork, and as such is indwelt by the spirit of life. According to Popes St. John Paul II, Benedict XVI and Francis, 
as a consequence of this spiritual indwelling, all creation holds an intrinsic value all their own. Holding such a faith perspective as true, however, means that it must flow into an ethic of care that should honour the integrity of creation at every scale. When after discussing scripture and doctrine in 1990, Pope St John Paul II wrote that respect for life and for the dignity of the human person also extends to the rest of creation. It signalled then a new chapter in the link between faith in God and ecological ethics. There is no denying that our world is facing the huge challenge of self-repair, not only of wounded creation, but also of wounded humanity. As a species, we are not only destroying and harming creation through our selfish use of the Earth's natural resources, through pollution and exploitation, but we are also hurting one another through greed, pride, ignorance and hunger for power, affecting most especially the poorest of the poor. Pope Francis says we are not faced with two separate crises, one environmental and one social, but rather one complex crisis, which is both social and environmental. In today's first reading, we heard how St. Paul told his hearers that although they didn't really know what it was they were doing, they still needed to seek repentance for their sins. And I think the same is true of us and our relationship with God's creation. We need to turn our hearts and minds away from being selfishly inward focused and start living more selfless lives and that also consider the cry of our earth for justice, peace, healing and unity, as well as for meaning and for more loving and caring relationships. In today's Gospel, we heard how Jesus appeared to some of his disciples for the first time since his resurrection. And although I find it somewhat funny that after he said, peace be with you, they in a state of alarm and fright thought they were seeing a ghost, he then said, why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Now the reason I say that I find it funny is because how many of us would have acted any differently? And yet we believe that not only were the disciples told on many occasions that Jesus would die and rise again, but they also had the testimonies of the prophets. So what was the basis of their fear and incredulity? For me, I often have to ask myself why some people are so surprised to learn that all of God's creation, from the smallest ant to the largest whale, is sacred, not just because it has been created by God, but more so because they are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. If for no other reason, this is precisely why we should be taking care of creation as we were directed to in the first few pages of the book of Genesis. The late Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, if we are neutral in situations of injustice, we have chosen the side of the oppressor. So if we aren't motivated to act because we are called to act as people of faith, then we should act because we are people with a conscience. From an ecological perspective, Jesus' great commandment to love our neighbour as we love ourselves must extend not only to other humans, but also to our earth as well as to living beings that share in the one community of life, or as Sister Elizabeth Johnson calls it, one splendid communion. May we draw on the love that we have for God and our neighbours, and as we stand on the prophetic traditions of the saints who go before us, let us open our hearts and minds to, to who we have been created to be. And as we embrace the new light and new life entrusted to us this Easter, let us pray for the grace to be good neighbours, not just to each other, but to the whole of creation, as we strive to care for all that God has made and has entrusted to our care.
Let's stand now and together profess our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of life everlasting. Amen. As we hear his word in the scriptures, our hearts burn within us with a longing for God's presence. With this Easter hope, let us now express our needs in prayer. We pray that those who teach in the church, especially Pope Francis and Bishop Greg, that they will remain faithful to the gospel of repentance and forgiveness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for repentance for our failure to care for creation, that with our sin forgiven, we will renew our pledge to hear the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for each other, that like the disciples, with our minds opened and graced with forgiveness, we can be witnesses to the risen Jesus in the daily circumstances of our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering from natural disasters in Australia and around the world, that released from despair and fear, they will receive all the help which they need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may experience the presence of the risen Christ with us in the realities of life, but especially in the painful and dark parts. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of peace. We remember with thanks those who faithfully served in the Diocese of Sale as bishops, priests, deacons, and those religious and lay people who dedicated themselves to the mission of the gospel. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray that Christ, our advocate with the Father, will bring the dead to eternal glory, especially for those recently deceased, Pam Fernando, Rudy Pereira, Antonio Valadviva, Immaculata Martins, Baptist Abadira. And we pray for those whose anniversary of death occur about this time, and whose names appear in this week's bulletin. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's ask our Blessed Mother to take up our prayers with her own as together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus, through you the Father's love comes to perfection in us. Empower us to witness to that love by the way in which we live in the world for you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Nurse, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Derek whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may be also one with him in his resurrection. Remember too our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Agatha and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Moved by the Spirit, let us pray to the Father in the words of the Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So just a couple of things from the uh, bulletin. Um, morning prayer resumes on Tuesday the 16th, uh, 8.30 adoration, 9am morning prayer and mass beginning at 9.30. Uh, new choir members, the organ choir is looking for uh, new members to sing. Uh, lector and extraordinary ministers uh, training on the 18th of April at 7 p.m. here in the church. Confirmation information and parent workshop on Wednesday the 24th of April and Wednesday the 1st of May at 7 p.m. here in the church. Sausage, sizzle and bake sale outside the front of the church you probably saw as you came in. Hosted by the mothers who pray for their children will be holding the sausage, sizzle and bake sale there. And there's also information there about their first national conference on Saturday the 27th of April. Uh, Caritas Australia, um, there's still some people who haven't returned their compassion boxes or envelopes. If you have them, could you please return them as soon as you can? And religious education classes resume this Wednesday, the 17th of April at 4 p.m. So, just... Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of Bill and Elizabeth so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today and next Saturday as they celebrate their anniversary. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.